Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today is Mission Sunday, and it is the third uh, day of our mission conference. For these three days, I use Acts chapter 1, verse 8 as our focus verse for the message. Chapter 1, verse 8, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So when we read this verse, there are two sections, two messages, very important. One is in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. It's like Jesus is telling us, as any church involved in world mission, in mission, we need to see there is an arrow pointing to a direction. The arrow starts from Jerusalem, and then to Judea, to Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That is the direction God wants the church to take. So when we talk about Jerusalem, we are talking about local ministry. Then we talk about Judea is local and yet is greater uh, in just in a town or a city or a, a county. So the direction heads towards Samar Samaria and the ends of the earth, which means we are going global. So in the missiology term, this part we call it global, 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 local, global, uh, global, yeah, global, sorry, global, global and local. Most churches, we have difficulty to uh, serve Jerusalem, but at the same time, we also serve cross-culturally, uh, you know, in Samaria or to the ends of the earth because the reality is that is very challenging. Once we get out of Jerusalem, there are a lot of unknown, a lot of things that we, we are facing in a sense like mission impossible because uh, very quickly we will face uh, cultural you know, differences, language, weather, food, you know, religion, and then health problem, and then, um, you know, we may have languages. And then if missionary or the family goes out as a missionary to serve cross-culturally in Samaria or the ends of the earth, we may face children education and support system, you know, uncertainty, just, uh, and sometimes no result, and sometimes even with results, we don't know how to discipline, train them, and then help them to become, you know, form a church. And then uh, there is spiritual warfare and there is security issue. I mean, when we talk about mission, we are talking about real life challenge. That means a lot of things we never have been experienced before. So we are walking into a direction that is really, uh, you know, that is beyond our control. And then we feel like, how can we do that? How can we possibly go from Jerusalem and all the way in Judea and then Samaria and to the ends of the earth? So this part in the first uh, Friday night and Saturday night, I already share with you you know, the direction. And when we realize that Jesus uh, commissioned us to, to head into this direction, we feel like, and everybody realized that we can do anything according to what skill or training that we had or experience that we had. That's why that's so important that Jesus said, but you will receive power. Power from where? not from because I, I know how to do it, 
not because I have experiences, so I'm experienced, so I know how to handle things, but because we are heading into unknown, we are heading into mission impossible. So we need to realize that we need to depend on the Holy Spirit 100%, 100%. So Jesus said, you will receive power. Quite often as missionaries, as church pastors, as Christian, we, we want to believe. We want to believe that yes, we can receive power. But in reality, you know, when we decide, when we consider church ministry, you know, almost 90%, over 90% of the ministry, we decide we stay in Jerusalem. We don't go out because outside is just uh, too much for us. For example, if a church want to talk about how to reach out to the Tibetan in China, to the Uyghur in Xinjiang in Northwest China, or to the Buddhists uh, in Nepal, Bhutan, or the Hindus in, in, in India. You know, not many of us will like to make us, you know, make it easy like decision say, yes, I can go. Because they are so foreign from us and we are not very sure what to do. So once God called us a lot of question, hesitation, reluctance there. So that's so why that is so important that Jesus promised it need to become reality. Otherwise it only stay in our head saying that yes, the Holy Spirit comes already and then came already so I can receive power as Jesus promised. We need to put Jesus promise into practice, into action. Then we can experience the, the, you know, the power of this verse. It's so important. You know, when the Holy Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit will guide us, guide us individually or a church to serve locally, like in Jerusalem, but also getting ready to go out and serve the Judea, that is, you know, our area, maybe our state or our part of the world like the East uh, US and then Samaria is another country or nearby maybe Mexico and to the ends of the earth. The Holy Spirit comes as Acts chapter two, verse one to 12, you know, tells us very important message. The Holy Spirit comes, you know, the. Uh, apostle, they experienced, they, they heard the sound, they saw the fire coming down, and then they have the power to speak in a language that many other people, many other languages, those people speak many other languages. They realize, they understand what the apostles are saying. And they were so amazed and so surprised, like why we heard our own language, our own dialect, you know, the language from our homeland. You know, when you uh, go through Acts chapter two, verse one to 12, you realize that there are uh, people from 15 uh, geographical locations. Some are nearby, maybe Samaria, some are, you know, far away, uh, in, in, you know, in the Turkey direction, some are in the direction of Iran now, some are from the Northern Africa, and they have their own languages. So when the Holy Spirit came, the first power he showed us saying that we will receive power and then we can, you know, reach out to, to different languages. And then those people, they, they need to know about Jesus Christ. So when the Holy Spirit comes, he, he, the Holy Spirit uh, led the apostle to reach out to people in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So you see, within a very short period of time, when the Holy Spirit comes, and the Holy Spirit already performed a miracle, 
and let the apostle know that Jesus Christ teaching about reaching up your be witnesses to the ends of the earth is possible. It's by his power, by the power of the Holy Spirit, not because of who we are, but because of the one we serve, because who he is. So this is very important. When I was in Africa, uh, we, we reached out to a, a people group, the Black African uh, people group called Mangan. They have around um, 4.5 million population. They are traditionally Muslim for almost 1,000 years. And when we went there in 1991 as a family, they don't have any, any church. There's no pastor for this people group. There is no Bible translator in Manga language. And then, um, yeah, we, we arrived there and the people told us saying that, well, you know, there will never be any church in our, church, in our people group. You know, so it's very, very challenging. And the language is so difficult because there are just oral language, no written language. And then we spent months and months and try to, uh, months and months and try to learn their language and try to reach up to them. It was almost impossible. And then after we served for seven years, and then we have a missionary came from Norway. He, he speaks um, some English, not, um, you know, not all that I can understand. Uh, he, he refused to learn the local language because he, he told me saying that, you see, look at Acts chapter two. Acts chapter two saying that the apostle that didn't learn those 50 languages, they just stood up and start preaching and everybody understand. So that's how he believed the power of the Holy Spirit. And then um, in year 1998, uh, August, I was in Johannesburg. I was in South Africa. Um, you know, one night when I was speaking uh, to a, a group of people, actually very international, maybe 200 people, not really big crowd, uh, people from all over the world. And then when I share about manga people, and then I heard some celebration in the congregation. So after I, I shared, I, I walked down from the, you know, from the altar and, you know, puppets and uh, a lot of people came to me, just, you know, hug me and say, they praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I, I, I didn't know what happened. And they show me, they say, did you see this message? Oh, they show me their cell phone, the message from the email and saying that, you know, uh, to, last night there are 30 converts, the manga converts in this region. And then when I read those messages, I was so discouraged because I spent almost six years in the area. I only see one convert. I mean, the week I was away in South Africa, there were 30 converts. That made me feel so bad, like, okay, come on, what, what am I doing there? And I, you know, I learned their language. I, 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 you know, spend time with them, you know, learn their language, their culture, eat the same food as them, you know, wear the clothing, the costume, everything like the local people. And yet I only seen one convert. So when I returned back to Africa, the country called Niger is in the, in the Sahara Desert area. So I, I went to visit this missionary. I say, um, can I go and visit this group of Christian? He told me, say, sorry, brother, no, you can't. This is my flock. Though those are my people, you cannot go. I say, look, I've been there many times. I learned a language. I don't stay there, but you know, I, I know people there. And then I do have one convert there. 
but still he refused for me to go and see them. Uh, and then, so I, I, you know, I can't go there. So I, I return home. Uh, and one day I saw a African came to my house and I was so glad to see him because I heard that someone called Sami is, uh, you know, pastoring the, the, this new, com new group of converts. And then the day I saw the, the black African, yeah, he, he's, he is the person that he uh, pastoring this and looking after this new convert. So I was so happy, I say, hey, Sunny, come on, come on, sit down, you know, uh, have a cup of cold drink uh, and tell me, you know, what happened in that uh, village? Why you have 30 people, 30 converts? So he, before he start, he just, you know, kind of, um, Embarrassed, he said, "Well, uh, we can't do it all the time." I said, "You you do what?" He said, "All the time we need to bring gift. Like if you bring some good gift, then people will come because they are expecting gift." So I said, "What do you mean by that?" I said, "Tell me, you know, what happened on that night, a particular night? The thirty came to the Lord, and then he started telling me actually." No one un understand what the missionary is saying because he is using English. And then in, in our, the Niger, the country, they speak French, no one speak English. And then, um, and then uh, that, but when he finished preaching, he asked who, who wants to accept the Lord, come forward, come forward. And people don't really know what, what is it because they don't understand. But one person went forward and then he received a gift. So a lot of people follow and receive gift, but why only 30 people? Because they brought only 30 gifts. So 30 people accepted the Lord. They even took the picture. You see, you know, we missionary, we, 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 you know, like people like us want to serve the Lord, pastor or church leaders or any Christian. We really, you know, just, hope that the Holy Spirit will give us power when we reach out to our family members, maybe they are not Christian yet, and then the Holy, Holy Spirit will show his power, and then when we share, and people will just come to the Lord, you know, either locally or, you know, cross-culturally. We hope that that is happening, but it's, it's not, uh, you know, that's what we experience all the time. So as missionary, we have missionary been on a mission field for 20 years, 30 years. They may have one or two, uh, you know, converts because of their ministry. Of course, some, they have, uh, you know, a lot of good, you know, fruits, uh, but a lot of missionary, we, we really feel like this is the promise of Jesus Christ, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And how, how can we re receive the power of the Holy Spirit? The power of the Holy Spirit is there all the time, but, but uh, how, how often do we experience it? That is our challenge, that's you know, our, our difficulties. So how the Jesus said, be my witnesses. Be my witnesses in Jerusalem, the slow calling, and be my witnesses even to the ends of the earth, that means you know, you, you, you just obey God and go when God call us. And when God call us, we obey. Then, you know, when we move out from Jerusalem, we realize that the, the further away from Jerusalem, we are just helpless. You know, in Jerusalem, I still can choose because I can teach Sunday school. That is, you know, probably... Okay, I can do it. I love children and I have children, so I can do that. And then in Jerusalem, if I go out and share about Jesus Christ, maybe those people, they are all Chinese. They speak the same language. We eat the same food. We have same cultural background. So it's okay. So the, the danger is that the more we feel like we can do it, the less we depend on the Holy Spirit. You see? So why 
church, many churches felt like for a long time already, we, we don't feel like the Holy Spirit is with us. We don't see the power of the Holy Spirit in our Christian life because where we serve, where we worship the Lord, people use what we can to serve the Lord. Even without the Holy Spirit, we still can serve. So in a sense that why do we need the whole power of the Holy Spirit? So this is very challenging because then I need to move forward, obey Jesus' teaching, say, go to Judea, all the Judea, to Samaria. Then if we arrest Samaria, we feel like, oh, wait a minute, this is not our territory. They are not our people. And they, they, their culture can be quite different. They, you know, their religion can be quite different. And then we may offend them easily, or maybe we don't know how to speak their language. The beauty of being missionary is when you move into this kind of ministry, this environment, if you don't depend on the Holy Spirit, you cannot survive. You just cannot survive. I mean, what can you do? How can you stay in a, a you know, an area that you don't speak their language, you don't know how to eat their food, and you, you can survive for five years, 10 years. It's just impossible. Even you survive physically, you know, mentally, psychologically, we don't want to be there because you, you're just wasting time. You, you just can't do anything. So when we talk about mission, why the direction that Jesus showed us is so important because the, the more we obey Jesus' teaching, move away from Jerusalem, then you learn to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit more and more because what we can do, we, we know that we can almost, we can do anything, especially to the ends of the earth. So, so this is very important. Um, when we were in Niger, there's a country, French speaking, north of Nigeria, south of Algeria. You know, Chad is on our east, Burkina Faso and Mali on our west. You know, it's the inland country, it's in the Sahara Desert. The weather is just terrible. You know, in, in the US, we may have uh, Phoenix, uh, Arizona, and some area, uh, Las Vegas area, and, you know, you know in, the, in the summer can be very hot. Yeah, but usually we go to Las Vegas or Arizona area, you know, we, we go for, for maybe Grand Canyon, something like that. You know, the weather very hot, but okay. We are just passing by maybe a few days. So that's fine. And those people stay in those area, the desert, semi-desert area. In America, everybody has aircon. But when we arrive in, in uh, this uh, country, we, we settle down and try to reach out to the Manga people. The weather is easily go up to 110 degrees, easily. And sometime, you know, even in the midnight, still hanging around 100 degrees. And there is no electricity. So we don't talk about things, we have no aircon, nothing. So, so you start wondering, how can I survive? It's inland, in the desert, so no river. Do you have enough water to drink? So you're just wondering like, how can we survive there? Then the language, I don't know you people. I speak many languages, but I never find learning another language easy. Never. And with this manga language, there is no written language. So we learn, say, what is this? They say, okay, this is a book. Then we need to like Romanize, write down the book, and then we read back to them and make sure that we learn it correctly very slow, very slow. So after three months, six months, a year, two years, 
we, we still can speak very limited Manga language. So I asked God, you know, if missionary cannot share the gospel clearly, how can people come to the Lord? How can people come to the Lord? It's very difficult. The weather is just terrible. Because it's a Sahara Desert area, there is almost no fruit, no veggie, no green veggie. I mean, we have a lot of uh, beef, a lot of lamb or goat meat. And meat, meat you know, there's, we never have any problem. But we cannot survive or meat. I'm from Malaysia. Malaysia is, you know, we have a lot of fish, veggie, fruits, all kinds. So, so if you cannot survive, how can you serve the Lord? And then our children, they were, they were in the mission school over 1,000 kilometers away from us. And there is no bus service, no public transportation. And where we are, there is no electricity and no telephone. So how can we communicate with our children? When we arrived there, our children, they, the elder son is 10 year, was 10 years old, and then eight year, and then the youngest is, was, is a daughter, uh, is a girl, she, she, she was uh, six and a half years old. And since then for more than 10 years, they stay in school, they don't stay at home. You know, as parents, how can we take this like uh, family, you know, just not staying together for more than 10 years? I, I, just, I just felt like God, you know, help us because we, we can't do it. We just can't do it, you know? So especially when the children got sick and then uh, they have difficulties, they can't even call us and talk about it. So I want to share with you a little bit here, just saying that being a missionary or obeying God to serve outside of our comfort zone, of Jerusalem, once you move into Samaria and to the ends of the earth, that is totally another story. But I praise the Lord because of my, you know, obedience, I experienced the power of the Holy Spirit many, many times, many, many times. When I look back today, we have a church with the local pastor and a church among the 99% of Muslim community and all basically all the converts, they, are, they were Muslim and then uh, we had four uh, young people, uh, you know, went to Bible school and went into full time. The first one is, is our pastor now in Africa. The second one, pastor in another bigger church, maybe a couple hundred people in the church. Um, when I look back, I just ask how, how they became Christian. Why are they serving the Lord? Every time when I turn back and just look back, you know, what, you know, the Holy Spirit had been doing, I was just so encouraged. I, I like to be missionary because, because what Jesus said, he became a reality to me. It's not just something like knowledge. Okay, uh, you know, by faith, you go out because the Holy Spirit will be with you. Our Lord will be with you. I mean, those does sound very good, but it's not very real because you never experience it. So uh, a lot of people told me saying that, Pastor, I, I go to church and then sometimes I feel like the Holy Spirit is not there. Sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, the church tried to teach me something to make my head knowledge increase, but never actually help my heart because I, my heart never feel it. So how can we make, you know, the, the Great Commission a real thing for our personal life and for our church? We need to work beyond the head knowledge. And when we need to, you know, 
we, we need we need to work uh, work to serve beyond go beyond the head knowledge. We need to go by faith because once you go into a situation like you pray to God, say that God, you help me, otherwise I can't do anything. You, it's not humble, it's, it's reality. Then you realize that the Holy Spirit is working, start working here and there. You know, in Africa, I have uh, outreach meeting every Saturday night. I prepare tea sitting under the tree. African, they love tea, so they will join me without inviting them. So I have a not big crowd, maybe three to 10 people regularly every Saturday night because it's in the dark and then uh, no electricity. So quite often I don't see who they are, but doesn't matter. I know they are sitting there, they're waiting for my tea. And then we, we share and talk and discuss for years and years. Sometimes I'm so frustrated like, I don't really know who they are. I don't know what is the response. Sometimes they switch into their own local language and then I got lost and then I was sitting there, they were talking and then sometimes they turn around and ask me a question. I say, God, you know, what am I doing here? I mean, you know, I don't, I don't see, I don't see what I've been learning from the Bible College Seminary, you know, helpful because you know, this is totally different. But like now, when I turn around and look at those people in the church, I ask them, how do you become Christian? You know, you just listen to their testimony. I realized that not because of me, but because, you know, the word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit changing their life, changing their life. Then I realized that, you know, when we, when we realize that we can't do anything and to a point that we just feel like, yeah, we can't do anything because what can we do? I use uh, John 3, 16, I use different way of sharing the gospel. I use all kinds of things, you know, methods. I went to, I, I've been to, uh, you know, seminary in Hong Kong. I've been theological school in Australia. I've been seminary in US. You know, I thought I learned a lot of methods, but they don't understand. You know, when you start sharing with them with, with very limited language, you, you basically, you realize that anyone come to the Lord and then confess their faith in Jesus Christ, it's not because of me. It's because of the Holy Spirit. When I realize this, I say, praise the Lord. Lord, you can send me to anywhere. Doesn't matter anywhere. Maybe North Pole is okay, you know. Uh, you know, so, so I traveled through 11 countries in Africa, you know, and then Asia, of course, a lot of countries. And why I'm doing this, I realized that when I obey, I'm working with the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit is with me, he is going to do something. And whatever he is doing, he is doing it powerfully. He is changing life. Whatever he is doing, he is teaching me a lesson. Say, so don't worry who you are. Don't worry about your qualification, whether how much you know or you don't know. For God, the most important thing is whether we obey him or not. If we do, then God is going to work something miraculously through me. The Holy Spirit is going to work powerfully. That's why I look back uh, our church in Africa. We built the church building in 2006, 2003, uh, April 26, Saturday. And the uh, Muslim burned it down in 2015, January. And then uh, I went back in 2015 when they burned down the church with my wife. And then uh, after two years, 
2017 January, I went back again because the new church building was ready to dedicate. So, you know, 2017, when I was back there, I was preaching in French. I didn't speak French for many years, but, uh, you know, I just felt like Holy Spirit is helping me to put the word together. And that meeting, we had more than 150 Muslim leaders, friends, sitting in our church, listening to my preaching. I just felt like God, you know, how wonderful it is to serve our Lord, obeying his, you know, command, and then just uh, trusting the Holy Spirit will, will, will just uh, be with me, work with me, and then perform his miracle. I just felt so encouraged, so encouraged. And then when we were in Africa at the first many years, a lot of people worry about our children. They say, your children, they will not stay with you. You know, you know, Africa is not, like if I bring my children to US, to Australia, to UK or Germany or some other country, uh, we are bringing them to a better country. But going to Africa, I've seen children, the missionary children, some of them, they, they were so disappointed with their faith and they turn away from the Lord. They don't want to follow the Lord. So you, you understand, as parents, my, our heart is so difficult. I can't even call them. For 12 years, all the years we were there, we don't have phone, we don't have internet. We just don't know what to do. But today when I look back, my eldest son is the English pastor in Atlanta. My second son is a missionary pilot in Africa for the past 11 years. My youngest daughter uh, spent three years in, in uh, Africa another three years in Thailand as missionary. So all our three children, they are serving the Lord. So, so when, I, when I just look at my family, I was amazed. I just felt like, what have we done as parents? Basically, very limited, even nothing. And yet, God honored us with children loving him, want to serve him. So, so you see, when we talk about our faith, our ministry, we need to talk from our heart because we need to experience God. Otherwise, head knowledge, you know, you don't need a mission conference. You, you can just, you know, you can read books. You, you can, you know, yeah, get information from anywhere. But uh, praise the Lord because the Holy Spirit is still working and he is waiting for all of us to respond to the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit moves us, say go, we just say, yes, I'm here, I'm willing to go. So when we obey and we walk with the Holy Spirit towards the ends of the earth, you see, the more we don't know how to do it, the more the Holy Spirit will take over because we depend on him and he never felt us. So we praise the Lord for that. So brothers and sisters, I encourage you to take a bold step decision to follow Jesus Christ, to follow the Holy Spirit. You know, go from Jerusalem all the way towards the ends of the earth, if this is the will of God. And trust him because Holy Spirit is coming with us, is working with us, is going with us. So we'll never be alone. We've never been in a situation like powerless and not sure what to do. Yes, we may be powerless, but the Holy Spirit is powerful. So we praise the Lord for that. This is the message I'm sharing with you today. And then I'm praying that many of us, we learn, we trust, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit with an obedient heart and just respond to Jesus saying that, Lord, if you call me, I'm here.
I'm ready to go. May God bless you all. Amen.